Hey everyone, welcome to Down With Bound. It feels so good to be in a tie. My hair is actually washed and I used an entire, or oh, half a thing of Dove Men Care Gel, a little product, because without this, my hair looks like Wolverine and everyone's scared around the house. So, whoo, I gotta go on Amazon and get more uh, product. Um, but today, my lecture, is on conclusions. Not the sexiest topic in the world, but hey, you wanna make sure every conclusion, whether it's the, uh, shaking hands at the end of a meeting, whether it's like a date and it's gone very well, you want that conclusion to be excellent, right? Am I right? You want that essay, you want that speech to be a knockout. You want that closer who can strike out the side, one, two, three, and win the game. You don't want wild thing to come up, right? You just don't want to use a in conclusion or in short or in summary, or I don't know really what I want to say. This video will hopefully give you tips, looking at examples from the greats, Lincoln and um, Martin Luther King and Jefferson, and looking at various ways you can effectively, creatively conclude your essay. Um, I would love for you to subscribe to my channel. I have lots of different episodes, lots of different series. It's not just uh, all on composition and rhetoric. And take care. Hopefully you enjoy this video. Um, any questions, let me know. Thank you for watching. Um, first thing. Oh my God. When I get first students, half of my uh, scholars in their essays are writing in conclusion. And I want to tear my hair out. And it would take me a long time to tear my hair out now, but... Believe me, I probably have enough students uh, that write in conclusion or some such cookie cutter thing. Um, and then they then they all ask me, uh, how many paragraphs will this be? And I want to like pluck out my eyeballs because no writer ever begins an essay thinking, how many paragraphs will this be? Or Shakespeare, how many lines will this be? Unless he's writing a sonnet, but that's a different story. All right, so number one, I know you may have been told at some point you know, to write in conclusion. But if imagine if Lincoln, Abraham Lincoln and his Gettysburg Address said, in conclusion, we need a government of the people, by the people, for the people. What's wrong? Well, that's stupid in conclusion. Get rid of it. The rest of it is, par it's, it's absolutely wonderful. How about the Declaration of Independence? This is how it actually ends. And for the support of this declaration, with the firm reliance on the protection of divine providence, that's God, we mutually pledge, that's 13 colonies, to lead to lead other our lives, our fortunes, and our sacred honor. Ooh, I love that. Notice both use a combination of anaphora and epistrophe that's repeating in a coordinated parallel style the same word or phrase. So of the people, by the people, for the people is epistrophe. Our lives, our fortune, our sacred honor is anaphora. Even of, um, even, you know, so you don't have to use epistrophe of anaphora, but it, using parallel structure is a very, very good, um, way to write, and I have a, a video on how to use parallel construction, right? Let's take a look at Martin Luther King's I Have a Dream, his very famous speech. And this is how he ends. And when this happens, when we allow freedom ring, when we let it ring from every village and every hamlet, from every state and every city, we will be able to speed up that day when all of God's children, right? And now he's using a, a pun a positive to rename all of God's children, black men and white men, Jews and Gentiles, Protestants and Catholics, will be able to join hands and sing in the words of the old Negro spiritual, free at last, free at last. Thank God Almighty, we are free at last, All right? Notice there's no in conclusion. There's no like, let me go back and state blah, blah, blah about the, uh, about the bank and being bankrupt. No, 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 we've long passed that. This is now the ninth inning. He needs to knock it out of the park. He needs to like like Babe Ruth take his bat, mark his shot. Was it Babe Ruth that did that? Yeah, it says, I'm going to hit it. I'm going to place it right over there and then place it there. It's easier for a writer to do that because you have control of all the elements. You have control of the words. You have control of the diction. You have control over the style. Um, and you don't have to wait for, you know, a fastball on the uh, a high a high fastball to knock it out into left field. All right, so a writer, I'm right here, 
a writer must seriously consider the conclusion as the grand finale of the essay or speech. It is often the place where the writer suddenly quits or is just too happy to be finished, or in some cases just too exhausted because you're finishing the essay at five in the morning and is due in class that day. And when a teacher says just to write in cookie cutter fashion, in conclusion, and then just restate your thesis from the beginning because it's just easy or maybe because that's what they were taught, well, that's just an immature shortcut that will not make you a strong writer. And hopefully you are listening to this essay. Okay, hopefully you are listening to the speech on uh, this little lecture online during COVID-19 because you want to become a strong writer. Not just because I want to get an A. Okay, getting an A is relatively meaningless. It's getting published. It's getting the job. It's writing the cover letter. It's writing the love letter. It's it's writing the it's doing the speech at the funeral, right? Those things are not graded, but are they effective? And that's why you're here, to be effective, right? All right, so let's go back to Dr. King. Dr. King uses many rhetorical devices in his conclusion, which serves as a mounting crescendo. The reason I'm going through some of these is to show that this is not by accident. This is not just cookie cutter, right? He uses an aphra when we... There's no hesitation or disbelief. He knows it will happen. He knows what he wants to do in this speech, which he says in the beginning, will go down as the greatest demonstration in the history of our nation. And he doesn't lie, right? If you make a promise, you don't break that promise. You make it happen, right? He re repeats the word ring. Let it ring, let it ring, let it ring, okay? He uses antithesis by contrasting village and city, state and city, Protestants and Catholic, Jews and Gentiles, very effective. Antithesis is a very effective way to construct sentences, uh, compare, contrast. He presents an image of a unified America, right? Whites and blacks all holding hands, singing that we're all free. What a beautiful image, right? He uses an illusion, unless you're you know, a Klan member, then of course you hate that, but don't be a Klan member. Um, he uses an allusion to a Negro spiritual and repeats the words freedom three times. Well, it's not by accident, right? It's called Apesius, like words, Hamlet says, when Polonius says, what are you reading, Hamlet? And he says, words, words, words. Three is the magic number, right? It's the Trinity. Of course, he's a preacher, right? Martin Luther King. So he uses God to bring us all together in brotherhood. It's a very effective way to do it. Thomas Jefferson does it, of course, in Declaration of Independence, right? Uh, this isn't easy. It takes effort. It takes time. It takes revision. It also takes you knowing what the heck you're doing in this essay. All right, number two, you need to keep on the subject of your essay or speech. This is rarely the time to bring up a new topic. You're talking about the Israeli-Palestinian conflict, and then you say, oh, yeah, I want to talk about Turkey now. Oh, I want to go to Iraq. <sighs> Unless it's, no, stick to the topic. For instance, here's, here's an example. If you're Patton, General Patton, and you're speaking before the troops who are young and green, you know, and they haven't been tested yet in the field of battle against the Nazis, you need to prepare them mentally for battle. To bring up football, I'm like, oh, so what do you think about the football? What do you think about the Green Bay Packers' chances? Blah, blah, blah. Well, I don't think they're playing Green Bay Packers were in existence in 1945. But anyway, anyway um, but it's not related to the theme or the thesis. It's irrelevant, right? If he uses it as an analogy to bring up war and battle, well, that's different but not just to bring up football for the sake of football. You need to think about how can I seal the deal? How can I bring in a closer to win the game? The conclusion is your closer, right? If you don't know baseball, it's the pitcher that's brought in in the ninth inning who can throw strikes and can get the hitters out to close the game, okay? The pitcher who gets, you know, like I just said there. All right, these are ways you can uh, consider the conclusion, a framing device, right? You see this very frequently, and I use this as a writer. I use this, um, and it, it's effective, right? Is there, is there something you need? Is there something that you use as a hook at the beginning that you can bring out in the essay? If there's no hook at the beginning of the essay, you need to go back and figure out how you can effectively use a hook to grab your reader's attention, right? That's, that's another lecture. If you opened an essay about morning, why not bring us to the evening or full circle, bring us back to the morning again. Uh, but something happened during the day that was so important, waking up and then going to bed. If you went 
to the lake, why not leave the lake? All right. So, sometimes it's like antithesis again. I was, you know, lost and now I'm saved kind of thing. Um, David Sedaris in his essay, Big Boy, talks about it being Easter. He, he's also talking about a bowel movement. It's very funny. It's a very short essay. I would look it up. And then he asks, uh, did it have anything to do with Easter? Right. So he says, it's Easter. I met my sisters. We're outside sitting. And then I had to go to the bathroom. Or then, then something happens in the bathroom, which is funny and disgusting. But then at the end, he says, did it have anything to do with Easter? He uses Easter as a framing device. It keeps it unified. All right. B. Oh, I think I got a call. Or a text. Anyway, a call to action. All right. Depending on what you're writing in the speech, you, it might be good to have a call to action. It is now time to move. It is it's time now to move on legislation. It is now time to take the environment um, and we need to clean the, pro you know, whatever. All right. So you've proven your point. If you haven't by now, maybe you shouldn't be concluding, or maybe you need to go back and make your point. Move the audience or reader to action. Encourage them to do something. Contact senator, vote, get involved, read more on the topic, read more on the author, know your history. All right. C, depending on the topic and the approach, end with a laugh or with tears, end with a takeaway message. Make us ponder. Use a you know, a personal anecdote if you are using first person. Don't bring up first person at the end. If you haven't started from the beginning, it just is just weird. All right. Also, don't start with first person and then totally forget. Uh, once you insert first person into an essay, it needs to be there. Right. Uh, it doesn't have to be obnoxious, but you just don't start. You know, oh, I'm going to throw myself in there at the end. Um, make us ponder. You can raise rhetorical questions at the end that may not have a simple answer but you will leave the reader or the listener wondering, thinking, right? D, fiction writers often have a great story or novel, right? I just finished reading Where the Crawl Dad Sing, um, and I'm going to have a review of that soon. Uh, I loved it. I loved it so much until like page 280. Whew, then it just fell apart for me. I know a lot of people are going to disagree with me on that one, but sometimes you need to know the end, the end point. You oftentimes need to know the end point. You just don't drive around South Jersey just for the sake of driving around South Jersey unless it's COVID and you just need just to get out of the house, but you need a direction. You need a destination. Are you going to Chicago? Are you going to San Francisco? Are you going to the Jersey shore? Um, then you just take out your map. You look at the best route on Google maps and you go. All right. E you may even surprise your reader with a certain piece of evidence that you have saved, like hidden away like the best present at Christmas. Oh, I think I unwrapped all the presents and then, Mom or dad or Aunt, Aunt, Aunt Susie says, no, I think there's something here, right? And then you, ooh, ah, boom. And then you just like, boom, shatter, right? That can be really good, all right? Um, that can be very effective. The problem with the conclusion may be with the essay itself, right? It does not have unity or direction or a thesis. If it doesn't have any of those things, it's going to be hard to conclude because you have no idea. Or your subject is so broad and you're just writing a summary of the topic or of the book or whatever, you don't know when to begin and end. So it just, you just like a hamster in a wheel, just going and going and going and going. It's great if you're on an elliptical and you're, you know, want to get some aerobics and get some exercise, but it's awful if you're a writer and it's even worse for a reader. Uh, avoid words like in summary, finally, I have hope I have shown. It's obvious we're at the end, right? And the end is very successful. And let's just say it's a very successful date. And you know, you may be kissed. I have no idea. Um, you would not say, I'm about to kiss you now. And then you go out and then you say, good night. And then you kiss. I don't know. Perhaps times have changed, but don't draw attention to your weakness. All right. Um, show strength and clarity. Find an interesting way to conclude, just like the time you invested in the effective way to begin. Don't use humor if there's been no humor in the essay. It's like wearing a pink suit at a funeral. You want to consider the tone, the topic, the style, and the theme. The way you conclude may just seal the deal, win the game, get that job, or win over a reluctant reader. Thank you, everyone, for uh, listening to my advice on how to be an effective writer, especially with conclusions. Conclusions are oftentimes overlooked. Um, and it's the last thing you need to overlook. Um, I've been won over by effective conclusions, even though the beginning was weak. Uh, novels that started weak sometimes end 
Woo, that was that was excellent. Same thing with movies, right? Um, so if you can subscribe to Down with Bam, and uh, if you like it, let me know. Uh, if you have a suggestion, hey, Down with Bam, hey Walter Bam, uh, I have a problem with X, Y, and Z. Can you uh, talk about that? I'm like, hey, give me something. I'll talk about it. Thanks a lot, everyone. Take care. Be safe. Bye-bye.